What's up, guys? It's hard to believe it's already week six. Third of the way done. That kind of sucks. Anyway, I want to apologize for not making a video last week because there was only a couple of days in between games. I didn't get a chance to do so. And I'm sorry. I probably would have picked the Bills to win. I can't say for sure because I usually talk this out with myself and based on what I say into the camera is usually what I base my predictions off of so I'm not sure what I would have what I would have picked exactly but uh, I, I, I think I would have picked the Bills to win especially after they went up 10 nothing especially after Brian Hoyer got hurt wasn't pretty but ultimately, the Bills were leading 24-17 in the second half when Jeff Toole came in the game, and then all of a sudden, it's tied in like a matter of two plays, and Jeff Toole can't move the ball. Do I blame him? Not really. He's an undrafted free agent. I, who do I blame? I blame the, the front office and the coaching staff, to be honest with you, for not being prepared for this situation. I know that they signed Kalb, and that was their plan, Kevin Kalb. But when he got hurt and you put him on IR, you weren't prepared for the situation. You thought, oh, maybe because Jeff played well in the preseason that he could be our backup. Clearly, no. He was just bound to make a mistake. I was waiting for it the whole time, and he makes it the worst possible time with the game literally on the line in the balance. So that leads the Bills to pick up Dennis Dixon, put him on the practice squad. I'm surprised he's still practice squad eligible. I don't know the rules with that. But all that matters really, and, and Thad Lewis is going to start, which I'll talk about, but I just want to preface the whole thing. Like, all that matters is E.J. Manuel. That's the only thing that matters. This, this season is meaningless without him. Unless he comes back. And unless Thad Lewis leads us to a couple wins and we are in contention somehow when EJ gets back. Because really the only thing that matters is his health and his future. So obviously you don't want to rush him back. You didn't want to throw him back in the game because... One game is not worth the rest of his career, potentially. But it was very, very demoralizing when he took that shot to the knee. I thought it was a lot worse than four weeks at first. I was, I was on the verge of tears. I was at the game, so I was almost on the verge of tears. It just sucked. Even though they still took the lead after that, it was just an awful feeling in the pit of your stomach to see your rookie quarterback who hadn't lit it up by any means, but showed a great deal of promise, looked like he understood what he was doing and had a feel for, you know, the NFL level of football. And there he is lying on the ground, writhing in pain. It was, oh, it was terrible. That said, I think the Bills still should have won the game after that. The defense folded a little bit, and then, like I said, Jeff Toole was not aptly prepared for anything, clearly. But on the short week, I get it. But still. It's a tough stage. National you know, nationally televised game for him to step out there, but he's just obviously he's not ready. It's pretty obvious. Doesn't mean Thad Lewis is either. But I don't know if Tool gives him a great chance to win. Like I said, I don't know if Lewis does either. But I trust the coaching staff to make that decision. Now I do. I was mad at them before because of the way that the backup quarterback situation was handled, but it is what it is, and it's in the past. And you got to look forward to the future. But I'll reflect on the Browns game a little bit. Like I said, I already did when, after EJ got hurt. Um, I just think it was a game the Bills needed to close out. They let him sneak back into it. Seven points on defense, obviously, at the end of the game. Seven points on special teams. Technically, I'm going to give him ten points on special teams. 
because Benjamin returned one to like the 30 and it got him in field goal range as it is. So kudos to the defense for stopping him there. So I'll say 10 points special teams and 7 points on defense. That's 17 points and the Bills lost by 13. So there you go. The, the punt return, it was tough to watch. Like how does the guy catch the ball on one side of the field, run all the way to the other side of the field, break, contain, Keep him inside. That's where your help is coming from. Uh, I don't there are a couple. Here, here's a couple of pictures. Is that block legal? Marcus Doughton. Is is that legal on him? Who's no longer part of the team? But is that legal? I don't think it is. In this new safe NFL, pretty sure that's not a legal block. If a guy's running and then he's it's like blindsided from the side, I, I I'm pretty sure they outlawed that. Am I right? Is it because they're running together and it's not a crackback type of thing? I, I, just, I don't think it's legal. Also, here's a quite obvious block in the back as Jonathan Meeks gets pushed. I mean, he didn't get knocked over, but he got pushed out of the way in the back. So that's a block in the back, right? I mean, that's two penalties on the same play. I mean, these were down. I mean, they probably would have got three points off of it anyway because it, these penalties happened so close they were out in the red zone for sure but their penalties nonetheless it's is, is it going to change the com, like the complexity of the game yes maybe is it going to change the result probably like probably not like i can't look back at that and say oh the bills definitely would have won if this got called because i can't say that but you just hope that you know for the highest level of officiating they catch things like that but all in all, I thought the defense actually played pretty well, despite the fact that 37 points were up on the board. 7 on special teams, 7 or 10, however you want to look at it, and 7 on defense from the TJ Ward pick 6. They let up a little bit um, that I didn't like. Jordan Cameron got open. Aaron Williams got burned twice on the same drive. It was really the only times I see him got beat all day, but it happened on the same drive which kind of sucked. They allowed a third and 18 to get converted at the end of the game, which was brutal. You just know sometimes. You just know. But all in all, I thought the defensive line played pretty well. Darius, Williams, both Williams. Branch even. thought they played pretty well. Kiko Alonso is still a stud. So the fact that Bird might be back or is expected to be back this week is encouraging. Um, can we please not boo him? We don't. We don't need that. We don't need that. Don't boo him if he's in the intros or what have you. Just just don't do it. Don't do it. Um, Gilmore's supposed to be back. And, oh, let's not forget, the most probably the most important thing that came from the Browns game is that Justin Rogers got benched. After getting beat on, like, two plays in the first drive or something, he got benched. And that was a good thing. Nikel Roby came in and played all right. Brandon Burton did okay. Adams, I'm not sure of his participation level, but it wasn't Justin Rogers. And I think Adams got cut, right? I believe Adams and Downton. It's kind of surprising because I thought Patton liked Downton a lot. But I get this. I guess this Ty Powell kid's all right too. Small school standout. We'll see how he does or fares. Probably just a special teamer, at least at this juncture. We'll bring the Bengals into town this week, transitioning off of roster moves, and Thad Lewis is our starting quarterback. whoop de doo The Bengals coming off a very emotional win against the Patriots, 13-6, where they stopped Tom Brady's 52 games with a touchdown pass streak, which is sweet. But I, that said, I don't really like teams coming off big emotional victories like that. Remember last time the Bills beat the Patriots? 34-31, we played the Bengals the next week and lost on the road. Now, the Bengals beat the Patriots at home. It was emotional. It was felt good, I'm sure, and, you know, they're probably still riding high off that. Can they come back and repeat the same, at least, defensive performance this week against the Bills on the road? Their defense is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. It's fantastic. Terrence Newman's a good corner. Pac-Man Jones is still a good corner. Um... Who else is there? Freaking 
Gino Atkins, obviously. I couldn't think of his name, but I apologize because he's really good. Carlos Dunlap. They're a good team. Um, hopefully Manny Lawson has some sort of insight because he played with them last year on what Zimmer does and some of the different looks that they might throw at him. At least I hope that he can provide that at least in practice or something. I don't know what kind of value that carries, but Thad Lewis is going to need all the help he can get, let's face it. The Bills, only reason they're not completely writing the Bills off in this game is because they have two outstanding running backs in Spiller and Jackson, who hopefully are healthy. But the Bills are, I mean, the Bills are third in the league in rushing, which is sweet. And they need to play like the team that's third in the league in rushing against the Bengals, who I believe are top ten against the run in defense. And I believe they're maybe like eighth or between eight and ten overall on defense. So that poses a pretty big challenge for a quarterback who's only started one game, only appeared in one game in his career, in Thad Lewis. Um, you read the scouting, I've read scouting reports on Thad Lewis just to see what he does good and what he does poorly, and it looks like he is he's big, he has a really good arm, he is a leader, leader, he is, takes ownership for things and has a good demeanor. But he is often inaccurate and tends to hold on to the ball too long and takes sacks sometimes. But you can get in uh, rhythms where he starts getting hot uh, if he completes a couple passes here and there. So, I mean, I, I'm optimistic, as optimistic as I can be. Optimistic but realistic. Let's say that. The guy's only started one game in his career. I, you can't expect him to do that well. At least he's at home. Where the fans are behind him, but he's against the Bengals D that's really, really good. Who just held down Tom Brady, one of the best quarterbacks of all time. And now they get Thad Lewis. So obviously I'm not overly optimistic, cautiously optimistic, and at the same time realistic. It's going to be on Spiller and Jackson. they got to be healthy. they got to run the ball well. They're probably going to see eight, ten man fronts at times. And <laughs> the offensive line just has to get them to the second level. That's it. Plain and simple, they can control this game by running the football. Because Cincinnati's not great on offense. They've only scored one touchdown in the last two games against the Browns and the Patriots, who the Bills have played and scored 21 and 24 points against, respectively. Patriots and Browns. And the uh, Bengals scored 6 and then 13. 6 against the Browns, 13 against the Patriots. So, there's differential there. Um, I know the Bills had E.J. Manuel at the time, and now they are stuck with Thad Lewis. But, I mean, the Bengals have Dalton, who is, I mean, maybe the jury's still out on Andy Dalton. I don't know, we don't know if he can get it done. A.J. Green, phenomenal player. Great dual tight end set in Eifert and Gresham. The Bills have been better against the tight end with Kiko Alonso this year. So, hopefully they remain that way. Um, it's, is Gilmore going to be back? Hopefully. Even with a club on his wrist, they still, still think they could use him out there against A.J. Green. He won't be able to intercept the ball, but if he can be in position, that would be beneficial. Like I said, Jerry Spurs can be back. Again, don't boo him, please. Ron Brooks might be back. So, I mean, this Bills defense is coming back to full force here, and they're already playing pretty well. I think they're only 21st in terms of yardage, but they're not playing too poorly. They're giving up a lot of third downs, which I don't like. Um, they, they just, just got to get, excuse me, they got to work on getting themselves off the field on third downs more or less. They, they're, they can force turnovers. They can sack the quarterback. We've seen that. They have to get off the field on third downs with a sack, with a turnover, anything like that. I mean, if they beat the Ravens and Joe Flacco at home, they can certainly beat Dalton and the Bengals at home. That's the way I look at it. But we don't, we have this ginormous X factor in Thad Lewis. So having to predict a game, sitting here right here right now, I don't think the Bills are going to win on Sunday. I'll wake up Sunday and feel completely different and just think that things are going to go their way. But I'll be in Section 221, 222, I believe, again. So you can come by and visit me. And like I said, I don't think... We're going to see a Bills win. I think the Bengals are going to win by the score of like 20 to 6. I, I, Thad Lewis, guys. Thad Lewis. I hope I'm wrong. Make me eat my words. 
Anyway, guys, thanks for coming 15 minutes into the video. And as always, go Bills.